Hello, and welcome to St. John's by the Sea Church here in beautiful Denver, New Jersey. It is Pentecost Sunday, also known as Witch Sunday, a day we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit to Christians. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all of Judea and Samaria, and, and to, to the, the ends of the earth. Because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God, saying, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But you, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare those of God who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent according to your promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant the most merciful Father for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and genuinely believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beg him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy 
through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our responsorial psalm is from Psalm 145, verses 1 through 13. I will extol you, my God and King. And bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you. And praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. And his, and his greatness, greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall commend your works to another. And shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty. And, and on your wondrous works I will meditate. They shall speak of the might of your awesome deeds. And I will declare your greatness. They shall pour forth the fame of your abundant goodness. And shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful. Slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all. And his mercy is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord. And all, and all your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom. And tell of your power. To make known to the children of man your mighty deeds. And the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And your dominion endures throughout all generations. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. The first lesson is taken from the book of the prophet Joel, chapter 2, beginning at the 21st verse. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. Fear not, you beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness are green, the tree bears fruit, and the fig tree and vines give you their full yield. Be glad, O children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, that early in the latter rain as before. The threshing floors shall be full of grain, the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust hath eaten, the hopper and the destroyer, and the cutter my great army which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and there is none else. And my people shall never again be put to shame, and it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your younger men shall see visions. Even on the male and female servants in those days I will pour out my spirit, and I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sh sun shall turn to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be those who escape. And as the Lord had said, and among the survivors shall be those whom the Lord calls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The second lesson is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven, and at this sound the multitude came together, and they were, were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now recite our profession of faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In video games, in most games, there's usually something called a cheat code. The cheat code allows you, whenever you're facing a task or just an encounter which is just too hard for you to handle to basically avoid the battle by cheating. Sometimes, interestingly in games, it's called the God mode. So today we see evangelism and we get to see the God mode. We have been commissioned to take the gospel to all nations. And sometimes that can look like a ridiculously hard task. We look at our culture, how it just seems to be running to Satan. We look at everything going on in Minneapolis with the looting and the hatred and racism. And we say, how will they hear the gospel? We look at a culture just enthusiastic about pleasuring ourselves and we say how can we bring them the gospel and then we have the opportunity to turn on 
the God mode, because today we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit, the work of God in the hearts of those we have the opportunity to share the gospel with, which moves their hearts in ways that our best arguments or explanations could never do. And now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Good morning, and thank you for joining us this Whit Sunday or Pentecost Sunday, which marks the end kind of of the first half of the liturgical calendar. The Easter season is over. And during the first half of the church year, we kind of focus on the life of Christ. And from today onward, we focus on living out the church's life. So we begin or end with the birthday of the church. We look back at the descent of the Holy Spirit on the apostles, as we read in our lesson from Acts. But we also look forward to the Holy Spirit coming to us, filling all of us, as the prophet Joel prophesied of the coming day, the day which is now. Through Christ, we become partakers of the Holy Spirit. For the apostles, the Holy Spirit began to give them understanding of Jesus' teaching. Not that they didn't know or remember the teaching, but the Holy Spirit began to open their eyes to all Jesus did and said and how it applies to their lives and, of course, as they preached to our lives. And we celebrate then the apostles going out into all the world to bring the gospel to us. What's important to understand in all of this is that the descent of the Holy Spirit is an actual historical event. It's not just some kind of a symbolic thing. And one of the reasons we can know this is because of the facts of history. Before Pentecost, the apostles we find are always hiding out. Even though they knew Jesus had risen from the dead, they were still terrified and hiding. Their leader, of course, had been crucified. The religious authorities were trying to hunt down the disciples. And they did meet together, but they didn't dare to meet openly. But here, as the apostles went and were praying together, the Holy Spirit descends on them, and all trace of fear vanishes from their lives. The apostles' only concern after this point seems to be to make sure that the gospel of Jesus Christ is preached to all the world. And St. Paul has a similar experience on an individual person rather than a whole group of people in the transformation of his life. As you read through the book of Acts, you see how the Holy Spirit is using each of these people in different ways to spread the gospel. And St. Paul went from being one of the chief persecutors of the church to being one of its greatest defenders, its greatest evangelist, you could say, taking the gospel to the Gentiles, and this transformation took place in his life virtually instantaneously when Jesus appeared to him on the road to Damascus. These are historical events. When you think of it, it's really ridiculous to believe that Paul or the apostles meeting in Jerusalem could have this kind of 180 degree turnaround, especially with Paul, from chief persecutor to chief prophet in such a moment without some sort of a remarkable event going on. For the apostles, disciples in Jerusalem, going from cowardly fear to 
fearless preaching. For the apostles on Pentecost Day, their eyes were opened and they realized so importantly that the hardships of this world are completely inconsequential to eternal life and to pleasing God. So often we can get stuck on how things are going in this world as a sign of our spiritual state or our mental health. They realized and they put their eyes on God, pleasing God. And so they go boldly into a hostile world, hated by many, assaulted, thrown into prison, beaten, whipped, cursed, and finally, in the end, martyred. And they do this not only for a day or a week, but some of them for decades. Why do this unless they understood and knew the overwhelming love of God in their life because of the work of the Holy Spirit, not because they tried so hard. Their source of joy had changed from pleasing and protecting themselves first and foremost to finding the true joy of pleasing God and doing his will through the Holy Spirit. And I'd say one of the greatest recorded events of this change in mindset occurs in Acts chapter 5, verses 40 and 42. When the council had called in the apostles, they beat them and they charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and they let them go. And then the apostles left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple and at home, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. You can see such a complete mindset change there. Their only concern was praising God and preaching the gospel and they trusted God to take care of everything else. St. Paul writes in Romans 8:18, 8, I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing to the glory that is to be revealed in us. No doubt they remembered Jesus words. The cup that I drink you will drink and with the baptism that I am baptized you will be baptized. You will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. It's an amazing thing to see the gospel in these people's lives, transforming them with this incredible mindset, not to worry about the things of this world, but simply to worry about pleasing God. Pentecost is a special day historically. It's the only day in the church calendar with the same name both in the Jewish calendar and the Christian calendar. Pentecost is actually a Greek name that means the 50th day. And just as the Jewish Pentecost is 50 days after the Passover, the Christian Pentecost is 50 days after Easter. In Hebrew, the day is celebrated, celebrated as Shuvus or Shavuot, which means the Feast of Weeks also. Interestingly, it celebrates kind of twofold. It celebrated the harvest and that 50 days after the first grain, you would bring and present at the temple an offering of grain to the Lord, but also began to celebrate God giving the law to the people on Mount Sinai 50 days after their exodus from Egypt, freeing them from physical slavery and a spiritual bondage to idolatry and immorality. For Christians, Pentecost celebrates the coming of the new law 
the eternal law which Christ brings, the new covenant, completing the old law. And the new law is the Pentecost understanding of the teaching of Christ, which comes through the Holy Spirit, who descended on the church that Pentecost day 2,000 years ago, opening their eyes to God's word. Usually coming up when I teach on the day of Pentecost is a reflection back to the events at the Tower of Babel, where God struck sinful mankind, which thought it could make a name for itself apart from God, and they began to speak in all different languages, signifying the confusion which takes place when we try to live our lives apart from God's will and following in God's ways. At Pentecost, we find various peoples in Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost, and they all hear the apostles speaking in each person's own language, depending upon where they came from. One of the things this shows is where God scattered the people at Babel, we see kind of a reverse of the curse here which gives an image that the gospel is meant to go out into all the world. We take for granted that kind of idea, but the, the mindset of the Jewish people was this is a special people, not only because of their religious system, but because of their race. And this shows the gospel is not limited to a certain race or nationality. It's not limited to a language but the church is to embrace all peoples and nations. The church's mission, in a sense, and if you take that image of Babel, is a reunification of mankind, not by common language, but by Christ. As Jesus prayed to the Father the night before he died in John 17:11. I am no more in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to thee. Holy Father, keep them in thy name, which thou hast given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. The image there of Christ uniting people from all nations and tongues into one, reversing the curse of Babel. We, the baptized, um, have been sealed with the same Holy Spirit, which is descended on the apostles 2,000 years ago. That very same Spirit of God who moved across the waters of creation, who parted the Red Sea, who burned the Ten Commandments upon tablets of stone, who touched Mary's womb when she conceived Jesus. And with that seal of God is the assignment of a mission to love God and neighbor above all and to seek the unity of mankind through the gospel of Christ. So knowing this is our mission and that our responsibility is to try to accomplish that mission, it's no less than it was with the apostles, although it can take different forms, we need to take a look at ourselves and ask how am I serving as an active member of the body of Christ? I think our time of lockdown is an excellent time, hopefully, to truly meditate on God's word and to pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ. To ask ourselves, maybe by phone call to different people, to be an encouragement to those who we can't see, how can I fulfill my mission today? What can I do now and maybe in the months to come that can show that I am a part of this body which Christ has called by the coming of the Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit, 
we are all made active members of Christ's church. And with the strength and power necessary to be true soldiers of Christ, to help our fellow Christians and really to help everyone in our common struggle against the world, the flesh, and the devil. St. Paul tells us to walk by the Spirit and not to gratify the desires of our flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh, for they are opposed to each other. Now the works of the flesh are plain, fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, selfishness, dissension, party spirit, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and the like. Those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. This passage from Galatians 5 shows us two things. One, that we are not to satisfy ourselves with these things, but also to show us how the world seeks, instead of filling itself with God, to fill itself with all these different thoughts and passions. They think they're filling themselves. So while the world thinks it's filling itself with temporary pleasures, in reality, they're just fooling themselves. You can't find pleasure in things that are temporary. And sadly, when we try to explain this so often, it gets missed. There's good news. As I said in the introduction, the coming of the Holy Spirit enables and opens minds and hearts. Our primary job is not to argue the best we can, but to pray that God will open their eyes. The things of the world seem to have so much pleasure and that's kind of what the book of Ecclesiastes is all about. There Solomon tells us of all the pleasures that he sought after and how they all left and went away. There's nothing new under the sun in terms of looking to the world to solve our problems, but it'll be nothing for so long the world has tried to convince itself that the lusts of the flesh the world and the devil and all the pleasures of this life will lead to fulfillment but history tells us that these things will pass away right after this passage in galatians paul tells us what can lead to true fullness and that is the fruit of the holy spirit love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control which come to us by living a life in tune with the holy spirit and walking in the will of god good news not only that we have the Holy Spirit who equips and enables us to do what of our own strength we can't, but more good news. The church's victory is inevitable. The gates of hell will not stand against the gospel. But the question each of us needs to ask ourselves this morning as we try to take this passage and bring it into our lives is am i going to continue the fight to strengthen myself for the fight by studying god's word by praying for the church by praying for those who need to be in the church or do i want to do my own thing like those at the tower of babel decided to do we are equipped not just with the holy spirit but the weaponry the armor of God with prayer with love of neighbor with faithfulness to God and we can move forward to victory 
In this conflict, those who do not fight will lose. But those who enter the battle wholeheartedly following Christ our King and fortified by the Holy Spirit have already won eternal life. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit, the easy mode. We thank you that he is in our lives, enabling us, equipping us, praying for us in ways that we don't even know how to pray, and enabling us to do so many things that we of our own strength are not capable of. Help us, Lord, to recognize his active ministry in our lives, to give thanks and to follow you faithfully. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew. That I may be with you and with your spirit let us pray O oh God who at this time did teach the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit grant us by the same spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through the merits of Christ Jesus our Savior who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the same spirit one God world without end Amen. O most mighty and merciful God, to whom alone belong the issues of life and death, in this time of grievous sickness we flee unto you for relief. Deliver us, we beg you, from our peril. Give strength and skill to your ministers of healing. Bless the means of cure, and grant that, perceiving how frail is our earthly life, we may apply our hearts unto that heavenly wisdom which leads to eternal life, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, the high and mighty ruler of the universe, who does from your throne behold all the dwellers upon earth, most heartily we beg you with your favor to behold and bless your servant, Donald Trump, our president, our Senate and representatives in Congress assembled, Philip Murphy, the governor of New Jersey, Tom Wolfe, the governor of Pennsylvania, and all others in authority. And so replenish them with the grace of your Holy Spirit, that they may always incline to your will and walk in your way. 
and do them plenteously with heavenly gifts. Grant them in health and prosperity long to live. And finally, after this life, to attain everlasting joy and happiness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, the strong tower and refuge of your people, we entreat your favor upon the officers, all who have been enlisted in the service and defense of our country. Ever spare them from being ordered into a war of aggression or oppression. Use them, if need be, as your instruments in the defense of our national life and liberty. But restrain, we beg you, the greed and wrath of man, that wars may cease in all the earth. Watch over also all policemen and law enforcement officers everywhere. Protect them from harm in the performance of their duty. We pray also for firefighters, first responders, and health care workers who protect us and ours from all types of danger. Give these men and women the courage and skill to carry out their duties well and safely. When they must go into the face of danger, be by their side. Watch over their families reminding them that those who go into danger, your loving care. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom comes every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops, especially Foley, Ray, and Chuck, and other clergy, and upon the congregations committed to their charge, the healthful spirit of your grace, that they may truly please you pour upon them the continual dew of your blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our Advocate and Mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, the Creator and Preserver of all mankind, we humbly beg you for all sorts and conditions of men, that you would be pleased to make your ways known unto them, your saving health unto all nations. More especially, we pray for your Holy Church Universal, that it may be so guided and governed by your good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to your fatherly goodness all those who are in any ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or estate, especially those for whom our prayers are now desired. We lift before you, Lord, from St. John's, both our church and all churches who are going through financial struggles at this time. We pray, Lord, for Lynn Blitz, who is just leaving the hospital now and setting into her second rehab center. We pray for Dolores Mitchell, the family of Louis Fiordamondo, for Bryce Myers, for Kelly and Richard Gafter, and Buddy. We pray for our friends and family who own businesses that have been so greatly affected by the virus, especially Heather and Al Merchcola, Larry, Mark, Roy, and Bill. We pray, Lord, for Rachel Rosenberg, and we thank you for her good recovery so far. We pray for Dominic, Sydney, for Heather and Grace, for Ariel and Oliver, and we pray especially thanks, Lord, that Ariel has gotten her degree. We pray for Noah, for Jonathan, and Brian. We lift before you, Lord, Marie Young West from Virginia, a friend of the Carabashians who is suffering from COVID at this time, and also Emily Marble, a nurse who has recently been diagnosed. She lives with Pastor Jenkins and their family and her husband. From Grace Church in Scranton, we lift up to you, Lord Ron, who is in hospice. We pray, give thanks for Jean and her ministry of so many years. We pray, Lord, that you will be with her at this time to give her strength and comfort that she's lost her sight. We pray for Teresa's brother, Tim, for Ted and Midge, for Kelly and Eliza, for those who have risked sickness to provide for others at this time, and for all those, Lord, who have been so greatly affected by the coronavirus. Hear us, Lord, that it may please you to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. 
And this we beg for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of all mercies that our hearts may be truly thankful and that we may declare your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, you have promised to hear the petitions of those who ask in your Son's name. Mercifully accept us who have now made our prayers and petitions to you, and grant us those things which we have asked in faith according to your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Please remember to support your local parish at this time, especially as most parishes are not able to meet together. It's easy not to remember. If you are part of the St. John's family or you wish to support our ministry, you may do so at the link below or by mailing your checks to St. John's Church. Also, while you're checking out below, please, if you are not subscribed already, please subscribe to St. John's by the Sea and click on the bell icon after you subscribe. Also, feel free to like the videos. That's always a nice thing, and it helps the videos to get promoted through YouTube. This is Carter Noah. Thank you for visiting St. John's by Sea Church. Thank you for visiting St. John's Bible Church. This is Carter Noah and St. John's Bible Church. This is Carter Noah and St. John's Bible Church. This is Carter Noah and St. John's Bible Church. Thank you. Thank you. Poor man. Uh.